and that's a small molecule drug. Uh, throughout the talk, I will simply refer to the drug as 744, and the long-acting form as 744LA. And the chemical structure is shown here. You could see it's a small molecule of a few hundred Daltons. Um, and it is a drug that's made by uh, GlaxoSmithKline. And specifically, it's an integrase inhibitor. It, it actually inhibits the strand transfer step as the proviral DNA is about to be integrated into the genome of the infected cell. And, and when this drug is formulated as a pill and taken daily, you could see the amount of virus in the blood or viral low uh, drops very precipitously in the first week or so of uh, taking the pill. Whereas placebo patients, the viral load does not change. And, and the drop is, is two orders of magnitude in about seven days' time. So it's a very, very powerful agent. We did not generate these results. And we did not do this either, but the scientists at the company uh, try to um, utilize this agent uh, for l slow release, mainly because it has the following uh, physical chemical properties. It has a high melting point, has low water uh, solubility. It has great potency, so you don't need very much of the drug, and it has a uh, very low clearance rate. That means it lasts a long time. You don't need much, it lasts a long time, and it's aqueous and soluble, therefore it's perfect for slow release formulation. And there are many ways that scientists in, in pharmaceutical companies could put drugs into long-acting uh, formulations. But the best way is just simply to make nanoparticles, crystals, nanocrystals of the drug. That, therefore, 100% of the drug is in your mass. Uh, there's nothing else, no excipients. And then these nanocrystals are then put into a liquid suspension. And it turned out that when, when you make such a su suspension as 744 LA, the long-acting form, and now inject it into, a mus into the muscle of a volunteer, a human volunteer, uh, at various doses. You could see at 200 milligram intramuscular injection, you have this profile. This is drug concentration as measured in blood. And then at a higher dose, you get more. And at the highest dose, you get even more. And now look at the timeline. It is not in matter of hours or days. It's matter of weeks. And in fact, this is out to a year. And you could see that it simply lingers in the system for a long time. And then these dotted lines indicate certain concentrations we like to achieve. This is one times the protein-adjusted inhibitory concentration, 90, or this is four times that. And in fact, for treatment purposes, we like to aim for such a concentration. So you could see it stays above that concentration for about four months. So this drug is amenable to quarterly injection or every four months injection. So the next question is, would it work for HIV prevention? And without waiting to do a series of clinical trials that are going to take years, one could, uh, in principle, model this in monkey experiments. So uh, we, the first experiment we undertook was to understand the pharmacokinetics of this long-acting form in monkeys. And that allows to determine that the dose we wanted to use was approximately 50 milligrams per kilogram of 744LA, and we needed to give it about twice here. And then, so we injected these amount in this critical experiment into male monkeys, uh, and then after the first injection, we started to put not HIV, but a related virus, which you call SHIV, and we could go into that if you like, but think of it just like HIV. And then 
uh, with a series of intrarectal uh, uh, challenges and to see if the monkeys uh, become infected or not. Uh, we collect blood and at the end sacrifice the animals to assess whether they're truly infected or not. And this experiment was carried out by Chastity Andrews uh, in my group and the results were so clear cut in that the untreated control animals within a short period of time all of them became infected uh, whereas the uh, drug administered animals all of them were protected from infection. The next experiment we want to do is well if, if this drug is so protective what is the protective dose or concentration required. And this one uh, is even simpler. If you, if you think about it, if we just give this one dose of the, of the drug and just keep challenging the monkeys until all of them became infected, the assumption is that while the drug levels are high in the beginning, the animals would be protected. As the drug concentration wanes, they should gradually, in a sequential fashion, the animals should become infected one after another. And then if you analyze the data carefully, you know where, the, where that crossover point might be. And in fact, that is exactly the outcome. So uh, now we're just looking at weeks post the first challenge. Uh, and, and you could see if you measure the, the drug level in the blood, initially all of them had high blood levels and all of them were protected. And as the drug level reached a middle range here, one animal became infected. As the drug level dipped below this threshold, uh, all the animals became infected, some earlier and some later. So if you do an analysis of all those high drug levels and calculate number of infection over number of challenges, the result is clear. You could do the same in this range and do the same in this range and bin those results. And this is what you get. At the highest concentration, about 3XPA IC90, 59 virus challenges took place, zero infection resulted. And then between this middle range, 22 challenges, one infection. And then below here, 43 challenges, 11 infections, so about a quarter. And then naturally, with no drug aboard, about 50% of the challenges would result in infection. So while there's still some protective effect here, ideally we like to shoot for up here, or if you're not asking for 100%, if you're willing to settle for approximately 97%, then you say anything within this range would be okay. And we know from the human data, from the normal volunteers, that we could, we could achieve this for three to four months with a single injection. I'm going to go quickly here in that basically there's another experiment that was intrarectal, trying to mimic perhaps this transmission situation among gay men. But what about the more common scenario globally for heterosexual transmission? So we looked at intravaginal challenges with macaques, uh, with monkeys, um, and basically uh, it's not 100% protection, but it's a dramatic level of protection compared to control animals. And, and this, this incomplete protection has to do with the challenge system. We're using an extremely high amount of virus, uh, which is very different from the intrarectal challenges, which is also not a good mimic of what happens in people. So this is just telling us that we could also protect against another route of infection. 